Hey gang, Aaron Reed again with NurseMastery.com. In my previous video, we talked about respiratory acidosis and alkalosis, as well as metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. And those are acute situations in which one of these two parameters is deranged. We're going to take it a step further here, and we're going to look at compensated and uncompensated respiratory acidosis and metabolic alkalosis and all, all the other different situations, okay? So we're going to keep it pretty simple here, and the first one we're going to talk about is this top blood gas, all right? When you're a nurse on the floor and you get this result back, what are you going to do? Well, like we talked about in my previous video, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to look at the pH and see if it's out of range or not. Now, what I see here is a pH that is within range, actually. However, we need to ask ourselves, is it erring in one direction or the other? So, the normal range is 7.35 to 7.45. This is 7.36. So, um, 7.4 would be right down the middle, okay? So, this is below that. It's below 7.4, but it's not below 7.35, so it's not actually out of range, but it is erring towards the side of acidosis. So that's my first clue. So I'm going to put on my thinking cap and ask who was the perpetrator in this situation? Who initially caused what's happening? So I have to ask myself which one's behaving um, acidotically. So the first one I'm going to look at would be the CO2. Is that one behaving acidotically? Well, yes, it is an acid and there's more of it, so it's behaving acidotically. Great, that was pretty easy. So I have over here already written acidosis based on my pH and I'm going to put respiratory based on the fact that the respiratory was the one that was acting acidotically okay now I'm going to look at my third parameter and I'm going to ask myself is that one also out of uh, whack and yeah that one's out of whack the normal range is 22 to 26 so that's increased now why did that happen that happened because it was trying to help compensate okay it was helping the situation all right first the um, we had an acidotic situation. Who was it behaving acidotically? It was the CO2, okay? So we've established who the perpetrator was um, because he's the one behaving acidotically, not bicarb. And then bicarb helped to compensate by increasing, okay? So when you add a base onto an acid, it's going to compensate and bring that pH back up. So previously it was probably below 7.35, but now it's not any longer. But it is erring on the side of acidosis. We established that this was the one that was responsible for that problem, and now we've established this is the one who's helped um, recover from that situation. So I'm going to put fully compensated respiratory acidosis. So F-C-O-M-P. I know you probably can't read that, but that says fully comp these are all abbreviations. Fully, co fully compensated respiratory acidosis based on the fact that I have a pH that although it is within range, something happened because it's erring on the side of acidosis. We established who was responsible for that. And then we established that the bicarb then helped the situation, okay? So we're done with that one. That's pretty easy. We're just going to repeat that same process three more times, and I'm going to show you guys what compensated really looks like, okay? So our next blood gas here is 7.44. Now, 7.44 is within normal range, again, because 7.35 to 7.45 is the normal range for um, a pH, okay? However, it's erring towards one side or the other. Which side is that? It's erring towards alkalosis, okay? It's erring towards the basic side. It's up, okay? Now we're going to look at our parameters, our two variables here. We're going to see which one's out of range, all right? So our first one is the CO2. The CO2 is decreased, okay? So there's an acid. There's less of it than normal, so it's behaving alkalotically. It's behaving Basically, okay, so we already found our perpetrator, okay, so based on our pH, I'm going to write alkalosis, and then based on this finding, I'm going to write respiratory, because he was the one that was responsible, all right, now I'm going to look at my third parameter, I'm going to look at my bicarb and see, did he help in this situation? Um, yeah, it kind of looks like it, it looks like what happened was um, there was not enough CO2 in the, um, in the blood, so an alkalotic situation was happening, or a basic situation was happening, and then my base over here, my, my bicarb said, well, um, I also need to be, uh, get out of range. I need to drive the CO. I need to drive the pH back down to a normal level because remember, this was once above 7.45. Now we're with a normal range because um, the bicarb helped the situation. So there wasn't enough acid in the situation. So in order to compensate that and even out the teeter-totter, the bicarb said, well, I'm going to get out of here too. So I'm going to, I'm going to decrease myself as well. All right. So since the pH is in, uh, is, uh, within normal range, I'm going to write fully compensated respiratory alkalosis. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. I'm going to cross that one out and we'll move on to the next one. So this is getting pretty simple, right? So our next one is a pH of 7.36. It looks like it's within normal range. It's, uh, it's between 7.35 and 7.45. So I'm happy with that. But it looks like it's erring on one side, 
and the air the side that it looks like it's airing on is acidosis okay so the next my next step actually let me just write that down acid and there's the first part of it now I'm going to look at my parameters. Now, we have an acidotic situation, or we had a previously acidotic situation. I'm going to ask myself, this first one here, is this behaving acidotically? No, it is not. That's an acid, and there's not enough of it in the solution. So that's not an acidotic situation. That's an alkalotic situation, okay? So I'm going to look at my next parameter, bicarb. Is that one responsible? Yes. There is less of a base, so that's going to create an acidic situation. All right? So I'm going to come over here and write metabolic because that is the parameter that's responsible, all right? So we've established that. Now we have to ask ourselves, is this helping out? Is the CO2 assisting in this situation? Is it compensating for what the bicarb has done? All right, there was not enough bicarb in the situation. The pH dropped below 7.35, and then it looks like it came back up to me, 7.36 now, it's within normal range. Did the CO2 help in that situation? It looks like, yes, the, the CO2 did. Um, the pH was acidic because of the bicarb, so, in order to compensate, the acidic CO2 left the situation by hyperventilation or what other means, or whatever other means. So, that helped the situation, it helped to compensate. And fully compensated means that we are within normal range, which we are. We're between 7.35 and 7.45. So, I'm going to X both of those out. Yay, awesome, stupendous, three out of four. <coughs> you can probably get the, get the fourth one here. So, we have a pH of 7.44. Is that alkalotic acidosis or within normal range? Well, that's within normal range, but it's erring on the side of alkalosis. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at this parameter here and ask myself, hey, the fact that there's too much CO2 in, in the um, solution, um, is, that an alkalotic, um, is, that, is that an alkalotic behavior? No, that's not. So let's look at the bicarb. Remember, 22 to 26 is the normal parameter, and it looks like we have too much. So when we have too much... Bicarb, that's an alkalotic situation, which was what created this in the first place, okay? So we've established we have an alkalosis. Now we've established it was of a metabolic nature, all right? And now we have to ask ourselves, um, is this pH within normal range? Yeah, it's fully compensated. And why did that happen? Because our CO2 increased. It said, uh-oh, you know, our pH is getting too high. I'm going to hold on to some CO2 by whatever means possible, typically by hypoventilation, holding on to that CO2, driving that pH back down. So, we have ourselves a fully compensated, metabolic, alkalosis. All right, guys. So, we've got one, two, three, four. Before, we talked about respiratory alkalosis and acidosis, metabolic alkalosis and acidosis, and now we've talked about how the body compensates for the two. So, these are all fully compensated situations. Next, on um, my next video, we're going to go over partially compensated situations and maybe even some mixed situations. So, it's going to get a little bit more complicated, but hopefully, we've um, established a nice little foundation uh, moving forward and we kind of know how to interpret ABGs at this point. So, um, again, nursemastery.com, like all my stuff, and um, keep subscribing, and we'll talk to you again soon. All right, peace and hair grease.